Every town has a dark side. Harvey Marsland is a killer from New York who served time for the murder of his girlfriend back in 1963. He was released in 1984, but a year after, committed another murder and returned to prison where this time, thanks to the help from an inmate, transitioned to assume the identity of a woman named Marceline Harvey. She then regained her freedom in 2019 after 15 parole hearings, but now once again is behind bars for, you guessed it, murder. I'm Andrew. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Everytown. Today, we present a disturbing story of an octogenarian trans woman lesbian who never stopped being a killer since her first back in 63. It's an interesting and sad story, one that will make you question the justice system while discovering the trials and tribulations of Marceline Harvey. Harvey was born in 1938 and raised in Brooklyn, New York, with his mother taking care of him while working as a seamstress. Later, Harvey spoke of his parents, saying, They spoiled me. My mother was soft-spoken and tried to raise me. I was just cantankerous. I was an only child. His father, a shipping clerk, died when he was just 10. Harvey's parents grew up in Harlem, but later moved to 158th Street in Washington Heights. It was in 1952, at the age of 14, when Harvey exhibited an early sign of sociopathy when he attempted to rape an eight-year-old girl. Hoping to curb this bad behavior, Harvey then underwent counseling with Catholic Charities USA, a network of charities with their headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia. His childhood trauma was then traced back to a daycare center at St. Eleusis Catholic Church on 132nd Street in Harlem, where strict nuns running the center whipped sexually abused and forced Harvey to eat rotten food. It was his mother who literally dragged him to the daycare center, even though he pleaded tearfully about not wanting to go. He managed to run away one time, but was chased down the street and got caught. And about this specific incident, Harvey said, They treated me bad, very bad, so I think I flipped there. Intellectually, I'm all right, but emotionally, I'm torn up. Court records show that Harvey was first examined by a psychiatrist at the age of 14 upon the request of Catholic Charities and had been involved in truancy, theft, heterosexual, and homosexual activity and cross-dressing. As he grew up, Harvey later landed a job as a copy machine operator Records also prove that his criminal life began with different felonies he committed, like burglary in 1957. After that, then came the worst. Murdering people, starting with his girlfriend, when he still identified as Harvey. In early 1963, Harvey was technically married to a woman named Florence Jackson, but that relationship was on the rocks. At that time, Harvey, who still identified as a man, was accused of raping his girlfriend, Jacqueline Bond. He reportedly drank often, took cocaine, regularly assaulted Miss Bond, and was in and out of psychiatric care. On April 18th of that year, he went over to Jacqueline's apartment and shot her. In the hallway of her house, Harvey chased her as she ran to the bedroom when another bullet hit her. She staggered through the kitchen and living room where she finally collapsed and inevitably died. Three bullet wounds were found in her body. It seemed that Harvey had intentions of killing Miss Bond because... Six weeks before the shooting occurred, 
She told Harvey she didn't want to go out with him anymore. With that, he pointed his finger at Jacqueline and told her, I'll get you, according to Jacqueline's mother who witnessed their squabble. On the day Jacqueline was killed, she was supposed to appear in court to bolster Harvey's attempted rape case, which was later dropped. But still, for killing Bonds, Harvey was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to 20 years to life in prison, but was released in 1984 at the age of 46. But it seems there may have been other reasons Mr. Marslin murdered his ex back in 63. In a later interview with The Post, Harvey said that he killed her not because she rejected him, but because he was jealous. She was very popular, he said, and I had images of her just being nice to somebody else. Yeah, sexually, you know. She was beautiful. I didn't want anyone else to have her. A psychiatric examination by three doctors at Bellevue in 1963 concluded Harvey had schizoid personality with sociopathic features, but he wasn't deemed criminally insane nor psychotic. A hospital record from 1962 suggested he might have delusional grandiosity, suggestions of chronic schizophrenia and paranoid reaction personality. Fast forward a bit, and a year after his release in 84, Mr. Marslin found himself in trouble once again and it involved him killing another living girlfriend, Anna Miranda. He stabbed Anna to death, who was a 29-year-old homeless heroin addict and sex worker. Harvey then chopped her up into pieces, put them inside a large black trash bag, and pushed a shopping cart with Anna's remains inside before dumping them near Central Park. He told police that Anna sold his flute to buy drugs and had been late in paying her rent. He said, I was very nice to her, but then Anna would go out for two or three days and I didn't know what she was doing. Mr. Marslin ultimately pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to 6 to 12 more years in prison. He was again charged with first-degree murder for Anna, but struck a plea bargain and pleaded guilty to first-degree manslaughter. But because he was still on parole for the 1963 murder of Jacqueline, Harvey was denied parole for more than two decades for the killing of Anna. Harvey had first dressed up as a woman for Halloween when he was 13 or 14 and admitted that it felt so good, but her feminine side remained latent. She met a transgender inmate at the Auburn State Prison in 1993 who encouraged Harvey to start taking premarin hormone therapy and assume the identity of Marceline Harvey, a trans woman lesbian. But his transition into being Marceline was rough. Previously identifying as a male, she subsequently began identifying as a transgender lesbian and was placed in a woman's homeless shelter in accordance with the New York City Department of Social Services policy. Marceline said that her problems in the past arose when girlfriends took her for granted or didn't show her respect. There had always been an attraction between her and other women, but it didn't always end there. Marceline resented the fact that there always came a point when women wanted to rule her and take advantage of her softness. She said, they misinterpreted it. They started henpecking me. Marceline also intimated that her feminine side helped keep her in control sometimes, but her female friends provoked her into violence. I told them there's a side of me you don't want to see, but... They didn't listen. She also described how she felt when her rage would erupt. Sometimes it's liberating, you know. You get all that dirt out, the pent-up stress. You can let your macho side come out. You're covering it up by being a woman because 
You don't like this male with that male rage. You don't want that person loose. Of the two identities, she said she preferred Marcelin. She felt Harvey was not a good guy and considered Marcelin nice, gentle, and loving, full of laughter, fun to be with, and the only one who was perfectly normal. State officials were reluctant to grant parole when Marcelin became eligible in the 1990s. During one state parole board hearing in 1997, Marcelin admitted to having problems with women, according to the court records. Other boards rejected granting her parole, citing Marcelin's attempt to place the blame on the victims. Eventually, though, she was released from the upstate Cayuga Correctional Facility in August of 2019 after 15 parole hearings. When she was granted parole in 2019, she recalled being overjoyed that it was orgasmic. And then, three years after her release, Marcelin was accused once again of a fresh homicide on March 30th of 2022. This time, it was the bone-chilling dismemberment of 68-year-old Susan Layden who used to be a jewelry designer from Teaneck, New Jersey. Now, keep in mind, guys, that at this point in time, Marcelin is 83 years old. Susan had reportedly struggled with mental illness and drug addiction in recent years, which probably made her an ideal victim for Marcelin. Susan was seeking placement at city shelters around the time that Marcelin was also seeking placement. They met at Tompkins Square Park in the East Village of NYC. This is a place where a lot of undesirable people hang out. And Ms. Harvey, at this point, claimed that it got to a point where she was ruling over Tompkins Square. I was the queen, she said. It's a very magical park, you know. Miss Layden was one of the three women Marcelin knew who would randomly crash her Lower East Side apartment near the park. One of the three women, Jillian, reportedly cooperated with the police. The other one, according to Marcelin, was the murderer. Marcelin boldly stated that the other woman murdered Susan because of jealousy. Susan may have died, but Marcelin resented how she was pictured by the press and media. She wasn't no Mother Teresa, Marcelin said. They make her look like a saint, like a sweet little darling. Marcelin admitted to the Post that she did kill Jacqueline and Anna, but insisted her innocence in the chopping up of Susan in February of 2022 as charged. But the evidence against her was pretty damning. The dismembered parts of Miss Layden were found in several locations around Brooklyn. Susan lived in an LGBTQ senior center in Fort Greene. The last time she was seen was when she entered Marceline's apartment on February 27th of 2022. After that, Susan was never seen alive again, but her head and other limbs were discovered in Marceline's apartment. There was also blood, cleaning supplies, a hammer, and a box for a hammer saw. Added to that was the fact that police had a video of her shopping at a 99 cent store while riding a motorized scooter and sitting on top of Susan's severed leg. Marceline was then arrested once again on March 4th after witnesses reported seeing her leaving her apartment with Susan's floral shopping bag, and CCTV footage was reviewed confirming Susan had entered but never left Marceline's apartment building. On March 7th, one of Susan's legs was found by police near a garbage can around three blocks away from Marceline's apartment. On March 30th, Marceline then pleaded not guilty to charges of first and second degree murder tampering with physical evidence, and concealment of a human corpse in the killing of Layden. 
One of the most disturbing aspects of the case was the admission of Marceline in a woman's shelter after she had left the Cayuga Correctional Facility. Because a shelter nurse there named Ann Brennan, who oversaw the intake of residents, was quoted in a New York Times article saying that Marceline was presented at the shelter as a mild-spoken, very tall, black, transgender lesbian. Anne said she had learned of Marceline's history of killing women and refused to admit Miss Harvey to the women's section where Susan Layden also resided, but the shelter managers overruled Anne's decision. Miss Brennan said, Apparently, Marceline's feelings and identity were far more important than all the other women that were terrified of her. A very similar incident involved a New York social worker employed at George Daly House, which serves as a temporary housing alternative for seniors on the Lower East Side. Monica Archer claimed that things were going well until she began informing the shelter's top brass of Marceline's erratic and dangerous manner. Ms. Archer also said that Marceline constantly threatened to kill her and other staff members, and they were afraid of her because Marceline kept a gun at the shelter. But despite Monica's warnings, Miss Harvey was allowed to live at the home and given her own apartment where she killed Susan Layden. And the shelter even broke its own rules by allowing Marceline to live alone. As a consequence of her complaints and concerns, Miss Archer was demoted. When Marceline was charged last March of 2022, Monica said it was no surprise, and right after that, she was fired for insubordination. However, Ms. Julia Saville, a spokeswoman for New York City's Department of Social Services, told media the policies were followed. Our policy, in accordance with the law, is to place individuals in shelters based on the reported gender identity. Being homeless or transgender does not make you inherently violent or make you connected to the crime that was committed. And all that's well and good, but... They seem to be forgetting that sometimes a killer is simply a killer, no matter who or what they are. Currently, Marceline is detained in the Rose M. Singer section of Rikers Island, which is the lone female facility on the island. At 84 years old, she's gone through so much in life. A long history of mental illness, charges of sex-based violence since the age of 14, a string of murders, and more than half a century of incarceration. Perhaps she'll get out again soon one day. Maybe she'll stay locked away for the rest of her life. It's tough to say, and so I guess only time will tell. So that's going to do it, guys, for this week's episode of Every Town. If you're listening to this podcast, go check out our YouTube channel called Scary Mysteries to watch these videos. And for even more exclusive content and hundreds of other videos, check us out at patreon.com slash scary mysteries. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you soon. <laughs>